Hey, how's it going, geometry kids? Today we are looking at 6.8 applying coordinate geometry. Pretty much, this should be called starting coordinate proofs because that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, there's not really theorems. We're just gonna go through some stuff, see how it goes. Um, it's kind of tricky, so we're going to do our best to get you there, though. Okay, so first thing we have to do is be able to make up generic coordinates for the vertices of a figure. Because what you're going to do is have to make like a generic rectangle. Let's say a rectangle with certain points. Now, we aren't going to use numbers, though, because if you use numbers, that only proves things for that specific rectangle. We need to prove it for all. So you pick an arbitrary value, just one that will hold for all rectangles. For this one, you have a height of A and a length of 2B. So that could be any number. It could be 4 and 8. Okay, So it would work for every rectangle. So if our height's A, well first off, both these points are something zero because the y coordinate on both of them is zero. You don't go up or down any. Okay. Now, if your height's a, what's this point's y value going to be? Well, it's going to be a, because you went up a. And that means this one's also going to be something a. Okay, so we have the, we have the y's. The x are a little bit trickier. This length is B, right? I'm sorry, 2B. So it means this is B and this is B. So it means over here you went to the right B units. And you went to the right B units. Now over here you went to the left B units. So over here we went negative B and negative B. And those are our four coordinates of that rectangle. Tricky stuff, guys, I know. Let's try kite. IE, IE, O, IE is 2A. KO is B, and OT is C. So this is C, this is B. This whole thing is 2A, right? Okay. At T, I know it's something zero. So I'm on the y-axis, right? Same with a k. k is going to be something zero. With that respect, I know i is going to be zero some number. Because I didn't go left or right anything. I'm on the y-axis. So e is also going to be zero something. Now for t, we went over c units to the right. So all my x-coordinate c. For y, well, if this is 2a, then this is a, and this is a, because in a kite, your diagonals are bisected. So that means we went up a. For k, we went to the left b units from the origin. So that's not just b, but negative b. And for this one, we went negative a, because we went a down. Okay, so that's part one. Phew! take a look at something. Can't do this one because we don't know what, what they're talking about. Let's do a proof. Here they give us a trapezoid, they give us coordinates. They want to know is an isosceles a uh, trapezoid? Can we tell just by looking at it? Well yeah we can. Uh, an isosceles trapezoid means that your diagonals are congruent. Right? So that means R, if RP is congruent to AT, we have an isosceles trapezoid. So let's use our distance formula. Remember our girl square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared? Yeah. And we'll make this one blue, this one green. Red and black, right? 
So first things first, let's find RP. Okay, so RP. I'm going to set my formula like I like to do. Right? So for RP, I'm going to plug in my X coordinate, plug in my Y coordinate. Okay? For P, I'm going to plug in my X coordinate, plug in my Y coordinate. Okay? So RP is the square root of a plus b squared plus c squared, right? What happened to my negative sign? It went away because if you square something that's negative, it comes out positive, so you don't need it. Okay? So I'm going to leave it like this. Let's find ta then, or at. And set my squ square root of something, something, something. My minus plus squared. Okay. So I'm going to plug my t in. Okay. Negative a. I'm going to plug in my zero. And I'm going to plug in my points for a. I'm going to put B and C. I'm going to get square root of B plus A squared plus C squared. So is RP equal to AT? Yes, because A plus B squared is the same as B plus A squared. So since RP equals a t what they call it r r rept r a p t is an isosceles trapezoid okay one more slide Okay, plan a coordinate proof for the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. You guys remember that? It says if you have an isosceles trapezoid, you connect the mid-segments. That cuts this in half. Oops. And it's parallel to the bases. Okay, so we need to prove two things. First thing we have to do is draw and label a picture. Okay. Well, I put the coordinates for D are going to be 0, 0, right? Because I put the origin. C, we're just going to make some value. Uh, let's do it. It's A over and 0 high, right? Our coordinate for A, so we're going to make it tricky. Uh, how far over do you guys want it to be? I don't know, B. And we're going to say it's 2C. Actually, I'm going to take 2B. Two, 2B. Two. Forgot one little tidbit. I'm going to use a 2a in 0. Why? Because I'm going to have to use midpoint stuff. Whenever you use midpoint stuff, use 2. So when you cut in half, it's easier to do. Use 2 to make it easier to do. So I'm going to call this one 2b, 2c. Now b, I go over, I can make that anything I want, 2d. But now I go up to C. That's the same. Right? And let's find our mid segment. What do you guys want to call it? Let's call it MS for fun. MS. 
MS. Now, how am I going to find my coordinates for MS? You have to use your midpoint formula. So you do 2A plus 2D. Or 2 is your X. And then 2C plus 0 over 2 for your Y. So it's going to be 2's cancel. A plus D, comma C, is S. M you do the same way. You do your, but now those are both zero, right? So you actually get 2B over 2, 2C over 2, which is B, C, is M. Okay? Now you're given is A, B, C, D is isosceles trapezoid. <coughs> With mid segment MS. Your proof are these guys right here. Okay? So you have to prove two things. For one, we need to prove that they're parallel, right? So to do that, we're going to have to prove show MS is parallel to AB. Okay? We're going to do that using slope formula. Slopes are equal, they're parallel. And to prove 2, what you're going to have to do What's that one say that half? It's half the sum of the base. It show uh, MS equals one half AB plus DC. Okay? And you're going to do that by using a distance formula. Okay, use your distance formula. You'd find MS, AB, and DC. Plug them back into that equation and show that it works. We don't have to do that because it just wants you to write the plan. Um, for the slope one, I do kind of want to go through that one really quick. What's your slope? Your slope of AB. is going to be what? Change in Y over your change in X, right? Which is just zero. Slope zero. Because 2C minus 2C is zero. For MS, it would be change in Y, C minus C, over your change in x, which is just 0. So since their slopes are the same, they are parallel. That one's easy. The distance one we don't have to do. Well, that's it for it, guys. Enjoy.